Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. I'm happy to introduce the guest today from the Sector Skill Council. In fact, we are going ahead with the series on Sector Skill Council by learning from the leadership team members. So today we are hosting Mr. Jagdish Acharya, who's the Paints and Coating Skill Council CEO. And uh, Mr. Jagdish Acharya and I have met on a couple of occasions and we have had very interesting uh, conversations around this particular sector skill council, which earlier, you know, I used to feel, oh, paints and coatings, what has it got to do? How many jobs that it, that it, does it create? And later when I spoke to Mr. Acharya, I came to know that it's a huge, big world out there. And there is a lot that can be done in terms of skilling jobs and, you know, uh, entrepreneurship promotion, et cetera. So let's get started by asking Mr. Jagdish Acharya the first question. Uh, sir, how is it that, you know, this Sector Skill Council has created an impact over the last uh, few years, ever since I think it was uh, started in 2015, if I'm right? So over the years, what has been the impact in terms of your achievements? And also, I think you should tell our audience the significance of paints and coatings, you know, in our lives as, as well as in terms of job creation. Uh, Madhuriji, thank you very much for having me on the interview today for the interview. I really appreciate the efforts you are doing to promote the uh, benefits of skilling. And you have done tremendously well in the last few years. We Thank all, the, from the Sector Skill Council and the Skill Ecosystem, uh, we are deeply grateful for the work that you are Thank doing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let me answer your second question first and then go to the first question. Uh, what is the significance of paint? You know, paint affects us in our everyday lives. Mm. You know, Paint, uh, age is 200, uh, 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 20,000 or more years ago, paint was used by the earlier people as a mark of communication, you know, decorating and protecting. They would use, uh, and they would use natural raw materials. Uh, they would use some oxides as pigments and some things like blood and milk also as vehicles. Okay. And from that, you know, things have evolved. Uh, to the stage today, and it has had many leapfrog achievements over a period of time. When I say when I say leapfrog, many technological changes have happened. Uh, you know, and most of them were triggered during the World War because of the need to create certain types of uh, raw materials. So, paint has a very interesting history, and paint has been known to human uh, civilization since long, as I mentioned. What are the significance of paint? Paint primarily caters to three main um, you know, attributes and uh, or caters to three main applications. One is it, it can be used as a protective coating to okay. protect surfaces which have to go through the rough and tough of the nature of, of acidic environment, alkaline environment, underwater environment, and even extreme environments as you have in and the skies. Mm. Uh, so paint is used as a protective coat to protect surfaces from deterioration. Mm. Paint is also used to decorate. Paint is, right. you know, for a for a country like ours where we love colors, paint is uh, and colors are something very close to our heart, and mm. we actually revel in the selection of colors and paints. So our houses are also decorated there. Yeah. So paint is used as decoration. Paint is also used for functional uh, purposes like road marking paint or by color coding of pipes which go into refineries mm. or, uh, you know, uh, school buses are colored yellow. So there are other significant attributes of paint uh, which comes through because of the, uh, the, the breadth of the colors that it can create. Now, the value of paint is underestimated, you know, because say, in an automobile, which costs some five to six lakh, uh, paint could be just one or two percent of the cost. You know? mm. But without paint, car is nothing. Yeah. Similarly, house may cost you maybe a couple of crores or more than that. But if it's not painted and it's just skeletal, uh, you know, in the, the raw material that is there, the cement structures, etc., it is never becomes a home. So for a house to become a home, 
apart from the people who stay in it, it's also necessary to bring it vibrancy through colors. So paint is very important. Now, this has led to paint being a very huge market in India, up to 60,000 crores or plus. Mm -hmm. And it is growing at almost close to double digit every year because our population is huge. There is an aspirational income, um, a group of people who are uh, on the rise, as well as there are a lot of infrastructure development happening, new houses being constructed. Yep. And we believe in the informal sector, there would be around 20 to 25 lakhs of painters you know, who are already doing painting. Now, painting, mind you, though decorative coating is a large part, there is industrial coating, industrial applications, protective and marine applications, wood polishing, so on and so forth, powder coating. So there are many applications in paint. So we have job roles designed for that. Plus, paint manufacture is also some kind of a special, uh, you know, uh, skills are required. Uh, knowledge of quality control, production, etc. So we have developed job roles for that also. Now coming to your first question, we though established in 2015, mm. we really started doing uh, getting jobs or projects in 2018 because our QP was till that time not recognized. Mm -hmm. And since 2018, despite the handicap of COVID, which happened two years or two years, we have done. Uh, over 70,000 trainings uh, okay. for RPL and over 3,000 short-term trainings. Now, this has been mainly, uh, you know, possible because of PMKY uh, projects, mm -hmm. some fee-based and state-scale mission products, projects. What impact have we made? I don't think we have yet, we are yet to make a more significant impact. I must confess that. But we are now known in the skill uh, ecosystem as a young sector skill council, a very good uh, in terms of uh, delivery, as well as in terms of uh, providing, ensuring quality training and certification happens. Mm -hmm. So I would say that we are there, but we have a long way to go. Okay. <laughs> Okay, sir. So, uh, and also I think going ahead, uh, like you said, the QP NOS and uh, the curriculum is in place and I'm sure these job roles and all are also going to be much more robust and it may even grow from here. So in connection with this, uh, how has been the industry contribution, uh, you know, in terms of creating the curriculum, because I think that's very important, right? Yeah. As far as the curriculum development is concerned, mm -hmm. We have had tremendous support from the industry. Okay. Uh, you know, I myself have put in almost 40 years uh, in the industry. I, I was in Asian Paints for almost 39 years. So uh, my uh, and my colleagues, some of them are also domain experts. Mm -hmm. So we have had very good connect with the industry. Indian, is, in, Indian Paint Association is uh, our parent body. Yeah. And we also are in touch with Indian Small Scale Paint Association and, and Indian Paint and Coating Association. Plus, because of our contacts, we know a lot of people, experts in the paint industry. So when it comes to curriculum development, we actually get a lot of good support from the industry, mm. from the main uh, players, as well as from small, industry, small scale industry. As far as curriculum development is concerned, I, I will not hesitate to say that we probably get the best contribution from the industry. Okay. But in terms of industry skilling, you know, some of our major uh, com companies who are in uh, in our sector, the the firms in our industry, they themselves are doing uh, skilling in a on a large way, in a large way, on a large scale basis. So it's not necessary that they get them certified or get their trainees mm -hmm. certified back because. They may not be doing the necessary NSQF levels, etc. But things are changing now. The mm -hmm. main companies are also helping us, uh, you know, sort of or or associating with us to get certification and get training done. Uh, I must also point out that we have had tremendous support from the industry when it comes to participation in India Skills and World Skills competitions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I must say that the industry linkage is good. Uh, it can be better, and uh, there is always scope for improvement in these things. 
Yeah. Uh, sir, along with this, we also see this sector has a huge uh, informal workforce or rather people like say, uh, you know, when we get our homes uh, painted, right, we go through a contractor and the contractor employs few painters who have probably picked up the skill. I'm giving you a very mundane example just to, uh, you know, connect with the larger system. So probably this is one type of people who are creating jobs in this sector. Plus, as you go, uh, you know, in the upper levels, in the higher levels or into different industrial painting and all that, maybe uh, there is informality and formal uh, workforce, right? But if you look at the large informal workforce, we also read, uh, you know, uh, most often, like you mentioned, RPL, PMKVY. There's a lot of formalizing happening through RPL. So how do you think uh, this particular initiative is going to help us formalize this workforce and also help them become you know, slightly more secure with their jobs, with their incomes and things? Yeah. Um, let me first address uh, the question of enhancing their skills. Mm. Okay? So let us ask the question whether the PMKUI, RPL type of schemes, do they really benefit uh, the painters, uh, you know, in a significant way? Yeah. Um, and is there scope for uh, doing better in that, in that area? So let me tell you what has happened so far. You know, mm. out of the maybe 70,000 RPLs we have done, 20,000 has come from Tamil Nadu state alone okay. because you know we got some target from the Tamil Nadu State Development Corporation. Now there, there was a bridge course of 12 hours. Okay. And what I noticed was that uh, in those 12 hours, we were able to do some soft skill training, which is necessary for the painter and some minimum amount of uh, uh, training in, in slightly domain related uh, matters. Uh, how to be, uh, how to do their work safely, how to ensure that proper uh, care is taken to, uh, you know, plan the work and work the plan. So mm -hmm. these things were taught. But Madhuriji, the most important thing that happened was that these painters felt tremendously proud when we certified them. And we certified them, the training partner was also a paint company, certified them through you know, by arranging really an event and, you know, making it look like a graduation course and yeah. kind of a convocation, etc., style of thing, mm. which gave them tremendous confidence. So it is, a, see, these people are all skilled, but it's important that they gain confidence, right. you know, and respect for their job. Painting job is not respected, unfortunately, in our society, but that's changing. That's changing because painting is becoming important. Paint skills are recognized. And if you do these kinds of things, you know, they get confidence. Hmm. So in terms of skill imparting, there is much more to be done. I do believe that, uh, and we are embarking on it, where we are giving them special training on how to use certain tools, hmm. you know, which makes their job much better, cleaner, safer, etc. And uh, some use of mobile technology for visual reality so that they can show their customers some visual representation of the color schemes, etc. We are trying to impart this and make the training better. So that's the part I said about skilling. The second part is in terms of livelihood, which you asked, is it changing their lives? The answer is a certified painter is now recognized by uh, contractors who are undertaking guarantee warranty jobs as people who can provide a certain level of skills mm. confidently. So it is changing the livelihood. And I know for sure that uh, when paint companies, some of them are training some of these uh, painters, the painters have come back and said that they're earning now more money than they would earn before, they, they were earning before. So yes, it is impacting their livelihoods. And that's the whole idea. The journey is slow. We can do more to make the journey more interesting because uh, you know real good training requires funding and funding is always an issue mm -hmm. yeah 
Yes, sir. Like you said, the journey is slow, definitely, and especially in uh, entire skilling ecosystem, I think many changes are happening, and gradually we see positive uh, acceptance uh, of this change. One more change uh, which I would like to speak about is apprenticeships. This is also a change which we would like to see, and I think all of us are trying hard to promote apprenticeships, including your sector. So, uh, how do you see the future of apprenticeships? What is the Sector Skill Council doing to you know, uh, engage more industry members in uh, taking apprentices. So let me first say what we are doing to adv for advocacy. Ever since I joined, in fact, the year I joined, we released a book on apprentice at the India Paint Conference. You okay. Know? okay. And ever since that day, uh, 2018, 19, 20, even during the pandemic, every meeting of the Indian Paint Association or Indian Small Scale Paint Association or one-on-one -on -one meeting with companies, I have, we have not spared any effort okay. in talking about apprenticeship program. Mm. Why? Because it's a good program. Second, because I personally am convinced mm. that that's the way to go. Yeah. But when it comes to application sector where painters are there, the contractors are people who employ them. So the apprentices program, we have to restructure a little bit to get these painters to become apprentices. Mm. You know, I can make a call, I can make a young man go through technical sales representative and become an apprentice, uh, you know, uh, go under the apprentice program and then get him onto the job as a technical representative. Or a young boy, uh, train him and then get him onto a quality chemist job so that he gets trained production supervisor, but painter, because companies are there, established companies are there, contracts can be signed. But painters go through as informal sector of subcontractors. So I think there is a problem there we need to sort out to mm. get them also onto the mainstream. Okay. And I have put these suggestions across to, uh, you know, the, the, the skill, uh, the people who uh, formulate policies in the skill for the skill ecosystem. So how we can, you know, include the informal sector and recognize prior apprentices. I was thinking, why not recognize prior apprentices? Yeah. Because, you know, Ustad Shagat system is still there in painting. Yes. <laughs> so why not we recognize it and then formalize it? Yes. So there is, there is a lot of work that needs to be done there. But I'm happy to say that thanks to the advocacy that we've done, our apprentice numbers on the portal has shot up uh, re remarkably uh, in the last one and a half years. That's really great to know, sir. And also you mentioned about informal apprentices. Yeah, uh, we need to recognize them and then try to bring them onto the formal system. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, and uh, also, sir, like when we uh, go deeper into training in this particular domain, I have personally seen a few, uh, you know, technologies kind of enhancing or accelerating the painting training where you can, you know, learn the spray painting with something like haptics technology and other things. So such interventions on the other hand and the COVID induced technology adoption in the entire ecosystem of skilling, you know, through uh, practicals being done through AR, VR or new technologies. So if you look at these interventions, what is the future you see for technology adoption? option in this particular sector for training for larger impact i would say let me give you one example and you you actually touched on it the simulator for spray painting uh, recently you know we uh, i have known about simulators uh, uh, of spray painting there's a company known as skill very we have worked closely mm -hmm. with them yeah. and they have uh, supplied to a lot of uh, paint uh, you know uh, paint companies for their training but let me tell you how PCSC has handled this. You know, we got, uh, uh, we, were, we were approached by an NGO in a tribal area near mm -hmm. Maharashtra for training youth in, uh, in painting. So what we suggested was uh, we want, and they had a good infrastructure facilities available. So we suggested them these simulators. We okay. said, let's take the bold step and have the simulator instituted. Mm -hmm. And we did that. And about 16 children, youth are getting trained. Mm. In simulator, the advantage is you learn the art of spraying without spilling a drop of paint mm. because it is done through VR, AR interface. Yeah. And you will not believe, Madhuriji, there are now children who have gone to level five 
Uh, you know, there are eight or 10 levels of that uh, spray painting uh, mm. training. They have gone into level five and they take to these things as fish takes to water, you know. Okay. So I do believe that, and this will tremendously help them in uh, getting that skill of painting. And then they'll have to do 20, 30% practical in mm. which then they can become really good spray painters, not only for interior painting, exterior painting, but also for industrial painting and for automotive painting. Yeah. So it's a fantastic thing that we, you know, has happened. And I believe that there is more scope for these things to happen yeah. in future. Plus, we are engaged with a, you know, a software developer who provides uh, mobile uh, tools, you know, uh, mobile apps for painters who can, as I said, go to the lady of the house and show her different colors on the mobile mm -hmm. of the house uh, pictures in different colors so that selection becomes easy. Mm -hmm. Calculation of uh, square feet area, paint cost, estimation, etc. all these things can be done. And mm -hmm. we are now uh, trying to get that organized. One more thing I want to share with you. Now we, we you know, the pandemic forced us to look at providing digital, uh, you know, uh, providing content through digital media. So right. yeah. we have worked on it and we have now two modules, one for the assistant decorative painter, Mm -hmm. which a painter, if he has a mobile app, mobile phone, he can actually start learning how to do, okay. uh, you know, brush up his memory about decorative painting. So all this has helped us and we hope to do more about of it. And uh, we are also imparting training through online. So, but ultimately Madhuriji, painting is a skill they have to learn physically. Mm. I can't simulate that all. <laughs> you, have to, you have to make, you know, the, pre preparing a surface uh, maybe really good surface takes a lot of uh, skills. Mm. So, this kind of practical understanding and training will always remain. Yeah. Uh, sir, just to add to what you said, uh, now we are talking so much about vocationalization of education from the school level and so on. I think there also, there is this fun element in painting, right? In school, we all love to paint. So if there is a way you can sensitize those children and show them a route in this sector, I know like... Uh, going forward, you know, that there are so many jobs. I think it will really do wonders, yeah. right? Uh, through fun, through simulators, just get a feel. And also, I think it adds to the dignity of labor and so many other aspects con connected with Actually, vocational education. Uh, Madhuriji, you hit the nail on the head. Children love colors. Yeah. And painting is natural to many of them. You know? Yeah, right. They learn it through from their childhood. Actually, the paint that we use for painting, people are reluctant because of the solvent factor and, you know, because the composition is toxic. And so, but we can use uh, environmentally friendly paints to let children work with it. We yeah. already made modules for the schools to create awareness of paints. Mm. And I have sp sp spoken to some parents. They want to make, uh, make it a hobby kind of thing, you know, as you okay. mentioned, painting, you know, best paint a wall and come on a weekend and paint the school, things like that. Yeah. So we want to promote that and make painting interesting because in Europe and in Australia and America, they have already progressed from choose it yourself, buy it yourself, to do it yourself. You okay. Know? So abhi choose yourself, I buy yourself, I do it yourself, I am you. Yeah. We want to do that. But at the same time, it can only be done for fun uh, because actually painting is a complex process and it needs to be done properly. So the painters, master painter will always hmm. be important and relevant in our context. But as you very nicely said, it will enhance the, if people know what painting means, it will only add value to the work, uh, to respect the work or the labor that goes into painting. Yeah. So on the one hand, it is the respect. And also I feel when children are shown this and when they become curious, they might even turn out to, you know, uh, explore more, look at it scientifically, yeah. come up with new uh, ideas, you know, patents, and you never know Absolutely. how, you know, their brains, uh, you know, would take this. So I think that is definitely lacking today. And 
uh, you can definitely contribute at the school level as well. So uh, towards the, uh, you know, um, advocacy and uh, making it aspirational, as we say, if you look at that aspect, India skills competitions, world skills competitions are playing an important role and you have trainers who are trained to, you know, train these people, coach these people. So how has been the performance of this particular sector sir, in the competitions? We are very proud of what we are doing in the India skills. You know? mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Mr. Hakim Mamka, who is in charge of uh, the India skill program. Last uh, year, uh, last time we had our participant go to the uh, world skill and he fared well. I wouldn't say, he, but you know, it was for the first time, it was a great uh, participation and a great outcome. We have identified three people through a range of you know, state-wise competition, which mm -hmm. was held uh, for a period of five, six months. We have been able to identify three very good people who are now getting trained by uh, Berger Paints in Calcutta. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. so we are hoping that one of them, uh, not hoping, we are sure that one of them will go to the skill, world skill competition. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to say that uh, we are putting in our best effort to get this uh, done because painting is a you know it's a is a visible entry you can see in front of you a good work yeah, yeah. yeah. so we are very proud of, we are very happy with the, what we're doing we can do more and we will certainly ensure that uh, our can our uh, you know participant our representative from india in the paint and coating skill council uh, sector uh, in the world scale reaches the top yeah I think that's a very nice positive note, sir, and really hope and we wish you all the best for that. Thank so you. besides all the points you just shared and told us the story of the Sector Skill Council, is there anything else you wish to add in terms of, let's say, message for people, the young people who probably would be watching this? Or also another thing is we often get some queries saying we want to start training in a particular sector, like say maybe painting. So how is it that they can approach you? Probably you can share uh, you know, a few points on this first is you know a message to everyone the youth mm -hmm. that there is so much happening now in the skill ecosystem thanks to the government incentives thanks to the government's commitment mm -hmm. to make india the skill hub of the world thanks to the education system which is now accepting skill as an important part in the education of children yeah Thanks to the major changes that is happening in making, uh, you know, education and skilling, and you know, an integral part of personality growth. Mm -hmm. I think there are lots of things happening, and I think your, I would say to the youth, this is a great time to be mm. a, a young person because there is so much to learn, and there is so many, so many things that is being given, yeah. uh, you know, across. Uh, as an option, as a choice. So seize the opportunity and make the best of the opportunity. And, uh, you know, I will also tell uh, those who are, uh, you know, uh, not privileged uh, to get e education easy. This is the time for us to skill ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there are many skills available. We are also thinking of multi multi job role. You know, a person mm -hmm. can become a little bit of an electrician, plumbing, plumber, and a painter, so that he can become an entrepreneur. Yeah. So there is a lot of scope for that. And skill councils are doing a lot of good work in providing this kind of training. Mm -hmm. And the education system is also now giving credits. Yes. You know, for what you learn as skills, so that you can also become a graduate with the credits, or a diploma holder with the credits. So lots of good things happening. So for the youth, my message is you're at the right time in the in the you know in, in the in the history of uh, our country and education, <laughs> and you must seize the opportunity. Yeah. As far as we are concerned, uh, you know, we are committed to providing good training and good assessments, because at the end of the day, robust assessments will ensure that the person who is certified after going through the robust assessment is really worthy of that certificate. Mm -hmm. so we are ensuring, we are trying to prepare assessment blueprints for all our job roles. Uh, proper assessments we want to put in place 
proper training uh, we want to put in place or we want to ensure that the training partners do their job well hmm. as well as you know we want to motivate people who have accepted to be trained to hmm. continue complete the training and then either become an entrepreneur or take up a job hmm. yeah i think that's very nice sir and also you brought in the element of how entrepreneurship promotion is also one of the objectives yes. and you also highlighted this importance of how they can get a degree through credit system through bwork kind of programs right now yeah. which are being uh, offered by many universities skill universities and colleges so on that very positive note sir i wish to thank you once again for joining us today uh it was really immense learning uh, to know about this sector and we would like to be in touch with you uh and to know more and also receive regular updates thanks a lot sir thank you very much uh, madhuri ji it's always a thank pleasure you. to talk to you thank you thank you sir